To give you some background on the topic, in the 1980s a company known as Bell Labs developed a revolutionary concept, the Premises Distribution System, PDS. This system, later known as Systemax SCS aimed to create a standardized, modular cabling infrastructure for buildings. This system is still used today in modern engineering, let's dive into it. A structured cabling system, SCS, is a set of cabling and connectivity products that integrates the voice, data, video, and various management systems of a building. There are several benefits that we anticipate from a good, structured cabling system. Some of the benefits include, consistency and cost reduction, support for multi-vendor equipment, fault isolation, support for future applications, simplification of troubleshooting, simplification of additions, moves and changes. Basically this is a cost-effective solutions which includes flexibility and scalability with easy troubleshooting. Structured cabling systems are usually developed for buildings, warehouses, oil rigs, FPSO vessels. The standards applicable for the different industries varies. We now take a look at the elements of the structured cabling system. The elements comprise of six subsystems, entrance facilities, equipment rooms, backbone cabling, horizontal cabling, telecommunication rooms or enclosures and work areas. The first one is equipment rooms. This is an environmentally controlled centralized space for telecommunications equipment that is usually more complex than a telecommunications room, TR, or telecommunications enclosure. Backbone cabling provides interconnection between telecommunications rooms, equipment rooms, access provider, AP, spaces and entrance facilities. The wiring used for backbone cabling may be either copper or fiber optic. The horizontal cabling system extends from the work area's telecommunications information outlet to the telecommunications room, TR, or telecommunications enclosure. Next we have the telecommunication room. A telecommunications room houses the terminations of horizontal and backbone cables to connecting hardware including any jumpers or patch cords. When conducting terminations inside a telecommunication room, to connect the backbone cabling and the hardware we use jumper cables or patch cords. Finally, in the work area, components extend from the telecommunications outlet or the connector end of the horizontal cabling system to the WA equipment. What are the differences and similarities between UTP and STP? UTP, unshielded twisted pair, and STP, shielded twisted pair, are two common types of networking cables used for transmitting data. UTP cables have no additional shielding, relies on twisted pairs to cancel out interference, is economical and widely used. On the other hand, STP cables feature an additional shielding layer, provides superior protection against electromagnetic interference and is generally more expensive. According to the ISO standard, there are different types of UTP cables. Cable shielding is when there is shielding around all the wires inside a CAT6 cable, while pair shielding is shielding around a twisted pair of cables inside the CAT6 cable. The table shows the types of UTP cables such as U, UTP, U, FTP, F, UTP, etc their type of cable shielding and types of pair shielding. For example, for the U, UTP cable there is no pair shielding or cable shielding. This table will help you decide which cable to select. Usually in a building U, UTP cables can be used while for example in an extensive vehicle manufacturing plant with a lot of machinery, there could be interference that may cause data loss in the cables. To prevent data loss through interference, we use STP or F, UTP cables. What are the differences between multimode and single mode cables? Multimode and single mode fibers are two common types of optical fibers used in telecommunications and networking. Multimode fiber allows multiple modes of light to propagate, it has a larger core diameter, typically 50 or 62.5 microns, and is suitable for shorter distances and lower bandwidth applications. Multimode fibers have different varieties, ohm 1, 2, 3 and 4. Single mode fiber allows only one mode of light to propagate, it has a smaller core diameter, typically 9 microns, and is suitable for longer distances and higher bandwidth applications. Multimode fiber is generally used for buildings while single mode can be used for telecommunication networks or data centers. Let's look at some of the tools and connectors used for fiber optic cable termination. This is the fiber splicing unit. 
This contains some tools as seen here including tools to clean and cut the cables, propyl alcohol to help clean the cables. This is important in splicing, to prevent data loss. The connectors that are used are FC, ST, LC and SC. The types of connectors are simplex and duplex. In duplex, the two connectors are for receiving and transmitting simultaneously. However, in simplex, the cable can either receive or transmit at a time. These are the equipment used for fiber cable testing. First up is a light source. Once the splicing is complete, you can shine a light from one end of the cable and check from the other end if the light is received. If light can be seen, the cable has been spliced properly. Next is the power meter. With this you check at different ranges what the level of your dBm is. One end is the source, and the other is connected to the power meter. We also use OTDR known as Optical Time Domain Reflectometer which tests the integrity of a fiber cable, data loss and damage. OLTS is more advanced than the OTDR, 